I started at Harborfront in 1975. I had a studio in Barcelona at that point, and uh, someone gave me a job, and that was the first professional job that I had where I was actually being paid to paint. I did portraits of people that uh, came to the studio, and I generally entertained the public that way. But uh, <clears throat> uh, my interests were drawn to technology uh, right from the beginning, and I started copying, surveying signs, and uh, all kinds of uh, geometrical problems, and uh, starting to experiment with materials. Uh, you are probably seeing one of the first uh, fully recycled pieces of paper that we were painting on. Uh, materials that I was uh, beginning to be interested in uh, was tar and cement, and uh, more materials that were actually quite affordable and uh, long-lasting. <clears throat> uh, my interests were architectural as well from the beginning. When these works were done, it was the beginning of the 80s, and we were kind of afraid of the nuclear holocaust. And I conceived this uh, art show that was eventually staged at uh, Art Gallery of Hamilton, where I had one man show. These were actually uh, remnants of buildings that were left after the nuclear holocaust. I admit, a little cynical, but when you're 26 or so, Life doesn't look so hot. Uh, uh, this was uh, a precursor to the, uh, the show that uh, happened in uh, 1981, actually, in, uh, in Hamilton. <clears throat> and uh, I created 14 pieces, and it was... I used plastic and foam, and uh, it was actually... The idea was to uh, stage a museum show 300 years hence from the time and it was called QEW. It was actually what would remain of us as a culture uh, after such a terrible event. Thank God Reagan was voted out and uh, nuclear holocaust was removed from our menus. Uh, meanwhile, I started a company called MC Square Design Lab uh, because of this, this intersection between the art and the design and, and computers. A uh, few years after that, uh, on a sunny October 1995, we received a postcard from, uh, from a hacking school in Romania, which was a Trojan horse, actually, and destroyed all our computer systems. Uh, wiped them out. That was the beginning of the Internet, and we were happy to receive any email at all uh, at that point. Uh, I t since I owned the company, I took a few months off and started studying what has actually happened. I had traced it actually back to Romania. Uh, it was an old KGB school that was teaching kids how to hack. <laughs> so uh, that led to a show with the Angel Gallery where the um, suggestion was to create uh, what I call visual genetics. We wanted to see what actually the, uh, the image that destroyed our computers was. We never actually found out, but uh, it became a sort of a Rosetta Stone from which uh, I created uh, the art show at the Angel Gallery. Um, it, was, it was actually quite a complex uh, doing because we actually sent uh, as invitations uh, vials with, with virus in it and uh, all sorts of fun things. <laughs> But um, <clears throat> I think what, um, what actually the basis of all this was, so this is a triptych that was done on one of the first Lambda prints. Uh, they were donated by Kodak. Uh, actually, this is a graphic representation of it, but uh, the actual pieces were impossible to photograph in such a way. They were printed on metallic paper. Um, <clears throat> what I was interested in was the... Uh, the, uh, the the actual uh, uh, code. Uh, it was base 64 code that the uh, virus came in. So I took uh, the code apart and started painting with it. Uh, it reminded me of fossils. Uh, reminded me, uh, if, if you're graphic designers, you will notice ligatures and FEDA and all symbols that go into making the base 64 code. Uh, so that became the basis of uh, seven large paintings that uh, we exhibited, that I exhibited. Um, what, uh, what happened afterwards is that uh, some interest was created by uh, architects, uh, which was my uh, original intent anyway, which led to uh, 
project with uh, Will Alsop when he was starting to create uh, the design for the uh, new OCAD building. Uh, I created a, a, a mesh that would surround the building and uh, be printed with a black and white uh, coat. And at night, it would look like this, being lit from the inside, and during the day, it would look like that. The pods would never actually uh, realize as you know. Uh, we also created a wayfinding system, which students found confusing. Uh, I sort of went back to the uh, <clears throat> simpler forms of uh, graphic rendering. I was not using code anymore, and I started to use uh, uh, sort of a behind look uh, of this digital sewer pipe that was kind of coming at us beginning of uh, 21st century. Um, there you see uh, different simulations of perhaps a voice coming through the, uh, through the uh, uh, optical pipe and so forth. So my interests uh, then became, uh, I created more three-dimensional works where I took actually the high-resolution prints and uh, went back to the sort of architectural uh, expression that I was trying to create 20 years before that. The, uh, <clears throat> the last public show I had was uh, at uh, Digifest on, uh, at Harborfront, which was a combination of, uh, uh, it was Harborfront and uh, DX, Design Exchange. This is a 20 feet by uh, 10 foot uh, piece called Destructive Architecture, and uh, that has spawned a lot of work that I'm completing right now, and hopefully I'll have a show very soon.